the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 20, verses 19 to 23. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus again said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent to me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, when we say Pentecost, we are used to only one Pentecost. The descent of the Holy Spirit 50 days after the resurrection of the Lord. What we read in the book of Acts today. But in the Bible, there are different events of Pentecost. Different events of the descent of the Holy Spirit. And each event has a particular focus in it. From the book of Acts that we celebrate today, the great emphasis is the unification of the human race by the Holy Spirit. The people from all different parts of the world, all of them were unified. Remember, in Tower of Babel, when people became so arrogant and haughty, they wanted to build a tower to go up to heaven and pull God down. Their languages were scattered. In their pride, human race was scattered. And now all the languages come together. And the apostles preached in one language and everybody heard what was spoken in their own language. All the languages united in one language, the language of love. That was the book of Acts. In the gospel today, there is another Pentecost. According to John, According to the Gospel of John, the descent of the Holy Spirit took place already on the cross. The heart of Jesus was pierced open and blood and water poured down. That was the Holy Spirit. And St. John says, I am the witness. The Holy Spirit descended from the open side of Jesus. In the gospel today, St. John tells us of a personal Pentecost. The risen Lord comes and breathes on every apostle and tells them, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. The great emphasis is giving the peace and forgiveness 
of the Holy Spirit very personally to everyone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now that is important to understand. Jesus said, I give you my peace, John 14, 27, not as the world gives. The world will not be able to take that peace away from you. Our way, nothing will be able to disturb us. The peace of Jesus coming and filling us in the Holy Spirit. We say that peace is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. In fact, the one characteristic mark of the apostles of Jesus is the peace. The peace that comes to everyone anointed by the Holy Spirit. But that peace is not what comes from outside. The emphasis in the gospel today is on peace. Jesus comes to the apostles and tells them, peace be with you. Again, peace be with you. Again, forgive the sins of everyone and give them your peace. Is there peace in our hearts? The one great test of the presence of the Holy Spirit in our hearts is whether I am a man of peace. Jesus said, when you go and preach, first say, peace be to this house. And everybody spoke about the early church. The members of the early church, they were men and women of peace. Even when they were led to martyrdom, even at the face of death, they could hold a peace, a heavenly peace. There was a heavenly tranquility in their hearts. Nothing could frighten them. Nothing could disturb them. They were able to rejoice and smile, smile at the persecutors, the peace of the Holy Spirit in their hearts. Now, what is that peace? That peace is not a sense of well-being when everything goes well. Everything is not going to go well anyway. And yet, even when nothing goes well outside, inside of me, there is the assurance God dwells in my heart. The Holy Spirit of God is dwelling in my heart. I can hold my peace. I feel secure. I feel safe in the hands of my God. That peace. That peace is the birthright of the disciples of Jesus. I remember... A certain person came to me and he said, Father, I have no peace in my house. There's no joy in my heart. I asked him, what happened to your peace? Oh, Father, I have a boss in my office, a woman father. Oh, what a woman she is. She would shout at me every day. If I'm a little late, she would not tolerate, she would cut half the day's salary. And even my salary, she would not give me in time. When I do not get my money, my salary in time, at home, another woman, my wife, my wife will shout at me. I'm always being shouted at. Is there any man like that here? <laughs> always being shouted at. There's no peace, Father. And my son, he's graduated. And he's going from interview after interview. But no job, Father. And he's creating a lot of problems in the house. Father, please pray for me that... I may have the peace and joy in my heart, in my family. I promised him that I will pray for him. 
And six months after he came to see me, he said, Father, thank you for praying for me. He asked him, have you found your peace? Oh, sure, Father. I have found my peace. I asked him, what happened? Father, my boss in the office is transferred. I have a man now in the office, a wonderful man, Father. He's such a good man. Always he smiles and encourages me. And he pays my salary in time every month. Because I get my salary every month in time, my wife is at peace. No problem in the house. And my son, Father, two months ago, he went for an interview. He got a job. He got a job, and there is peace in the family. There is joy in my heart. Father, thank you for praying for me. I told him, so my friend, what you call peace is a circumstance that you are living in. A favorable circumstance. A favorable circumstance in your office, a favorable circumstance in your family, a favorable circumstance of a job for your son, is that what you call peace? Yes, Father, that is what God has done for me. That's why there is peace in my heart, in my family. I told him, but you have no authority over your circumstance tomorrow. Your boss could be transferred. Oh no, Father, let him not be transferred. But you have no authority over the transfer of your boss. A worse boss could come back. You may not get your salary at all. And you may be dismissed from your job. Oh no, Father, but it could happen. It could happen. And when you don't get your salary in time... There will be a problem in your family and your son could lose his job. Terrible father, he said. I told him, your peace is not outside of your heart. Your peace must be within your heart. And that's what Jesus is saying. I give you my peace, not as the world gives and nothing in the world will be able to take that peace away from your heart, the peace of the Holy Spirit. And that's the peace that Jesus is offering us today in the Holy Spirit. When we lose that peace from our heart, the only way to lose that peace is by sin. Sin is the cause of all disturbance. If there is disturbance in our heart, it is because of sin. Sin causes all division, all disturbance. And Jesus is giving authority, authority to the disciples over that sin in my heart. And there's a great rejoicing for us today. Even when I commit a sin, my peace will not be taken away because the Lord has given authority over my sin to the church. Jesus said to the apostles, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. When you forgive the sins of any, they will be forgiven. He breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the source of all the peace. You know, my dear friends, the sacrament of confession. I remember a certain professor came to me and he was telling me that his life was miserable. He said, Father, I went for retreat after retreat and yet I had a problem in my life. And the problem was, I was gambling. I will make a decision and I will stop gambling for some time. 
But then, Father, after two months, three months, I'll go back to gambling. I will lose all the money. And my wife hates me. My children despise me. No money in the house. All the money I get at salary is spent on gambling. I make a decision. I go for confession, Father. But my sin is not taken away from me. But this time, Father, in the retreat, something beautiful happened. I heard the voice of God. The voice of God. And that voice was First Book of Kings, chapter 18, verse 21. What prophet Elijah said to the people, the people gathered the Israelites. How long will you waver between two opinions? The Israelites were wavering between two opinions. Yahweh, the God, and Baal, the goddess whom Ahab and Jezebel the king brought. An altar set up for the false goddess Baal. And people were of two opinions, which God to adore. Many people turned to Baal, and there were priests and prophets for Baal as well. And the people were in two minds. And the prophet, prophet Elijah gathered the people and said, How long will you waver between two opinions? And then there was a big showdown. And you know that story. The fire came down from heaven and burned the offerings. And the people knew Yahweh was God. That's the context. That particular verse, how long will you waver between two opinions? And he said, when that word was spoken by the preacher, I knew, Father, in the Holy Spirit, God was speaking to me. I was wavering all the time between two opinions. Even when I made a decision, I repented over my sin, I confessed there was the other opinion in my heart. Maybe next time when I go gambling, I will get a big shot, big money, big money. And therefore, I went again for gambling. And I could not give up gambling. But today, Father, the Holy Spirit fell upon me and burned away the roots of that evil. I knew God spoke to me. God spoke to me and the power of the Holy Spirit came down upon me and I knew I was set free completely. There is a beautiful saying in Isaiah chapter 4, chapter 4, verse 4. Holy Spirit, the burning fire. The burning fire that burns away the roots of evil. The roots, even the roots, evil in its roots. And that is what happened to this professor from that time onwards. He would come every year for a retreat. He never had even that tendency to go for gambling. And that's when his confession became truly valid and meaningful. And this is where the Lord is inviting every one of us to an authentic forgiveness from God so that the Holy Spirit may be able to take over every sinful addiction, every sinful habit, in our hearts, that there may be peace. As long as there is any addiction, any sinful tendency, any sinful habit in us, there will be no peace in our hearts. And the one characteristic, as I said before, the one characteristic of the Holy Spirit anointing is peace. Holding the tranquility, heavenly tranquility, that God offers us. That's our prayer today. Let there be peace. Let there be peace in our hearts. Let there be peace in our families. 
that all of us may experience heavenly peace filling our hearts. Amen.